Hello, 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 this is Attorney Mike Graham. I'm coming to you from Chicago, as usual. I got some good clips, and I have some people to thank. Uh, Natalie came through big. Miriam sent me a great clip. And Ron DeSue, ever, ever, everyone was started telling me about uh, this trial. I haven't seen much of it. I saw a little bit. It, it did look good. It looked promising. Um, but the, it's a traffic case in Judge Webster's room. I just, I just, uh, I just saw uh, Jay Jay Regeer booting up <laughs> for his bench trial. It, it it does look promising, but I, I I can't make guarantees. However, multiple people send it to me who know what they're doing. So I, I'm guessing it's good. I'm guessing it's good. Prior to that, though, I got I got a great one out of um, out of Judge Simpson's courtroom, and I also got this fun one, this fun little intro here. Let's get it started, shall we? I'll be right there. And with you again. I'm also insulted by the fact that someone that's facing a felony sentencing, it shows up 30 minutes late for his sentencing. I accept your apology. But I don't think you take all of this very seriously. I do, Your Honor. I take it very seriously. I'm here. I'm. I, I, I talk to Chris Pay. I, I show up. I show up to everything. I turn myself in. I'm on the Zoom calls every day. I, I try my best to get here on time, sir. I went and got a haircut. I try. I try to go out now. Nice the court wishes to finish your sentence. You got a haircut. The court's going to order you as a condition of probation <laughs> to the Greenwood County. After that point, I don't think that we have any issue with Alana Reed, assistant public defender with an I want the e-dead, and that's my mistake. Oh, okay. Court does call the case of the people versus Sapphire Harburg. Silvana Reed, assistant public defender with an on behalf oh. of Ms. Harburg. Ms. Harburg, could you please state your name for the record? Sapphire Harburg. Okay. Thank you. Your Honor, there's a couple. Silvana Reed, she's been on here before. She's awesome. She gets the clients, and this one is no exception. All of matters going on here. This is the date and time for sentencing, but Ms. Harburg was brought into custody yesterday um, for a bond violation. I saw that she's on today's arraignment docket, but I was hoping that we could perhaps get her arraigned on the bond violation and handle the sentencing. Um, I don't have the bond violation. I love a big and rate. That's um, awesome. Well, I... On which bond violation? So you're Mine, on Teresa Go ahead, Ms. Blair. Yes, Your Honor. Teresa Blair on behalf of probation. The bond violation, she violated conditions of bond in this case, Your Honor. Um, she completed a pre-sentence interview with me. Um, I had concerns about continued drug use. I asked the court to put um, a testing order in place, which it did. She did go for testing and tested positive um, for fentanyl uh marijuana and cocaine i believe your honor um she was the court did issue a warrant on that um due to that she did appear yesterday in person for a pe on another matter um she was taken into custody on the bench i i i i'm gonna spoil us a little bit but but this defendant's position is that that violating on cocaine fentanyl and marijuana is good because she's not on heroin despite the fact that <laughs> she's on maintenance drugs. Literally, that's what she tries to sell. Or in this case, so that's the bond violation that Ms. Reed is referring to. However, Your Honor, given um, the circumstances that happened from yesterday, that case is being remanded down to district court, which is being kept um, at this court with you, and she is scheduled for sentencing in that matter on May 24th. Um, I'm not sure if the court wants to proceed with sentencing in this matter um, today and then handle that matter on the 24th or if the court would like to bump this matter to the 24th and handle it all together. Ms. Reed. Ms. Pallara did address the violation in her recommendation. I think that as long as Ms. Harburg, we discussed that, that recommendation, which was for four days um, in custody for the violation. Um, Ms. Harburg understands that as long as she's able to um, get out of custody after that point, I don't think that we have any issue with adjourning the sentence. Well, you, you can already see it, but this whole hearing, this whole hearing, <laughs> Judge Simpson's face says it all, as it usually does. I mean, it's wild. So that they can both be done at the same time. Well, what's the bond on the other case? 
unfortunately, I do not have that information and I don't think that our system is working so that I can pull it up right now. Your Honor, I don't believe that she has a bond in that matter and I can look and tell you. That was on the matter that was before Judge Freshour. That's now my case. She doesn't have a bond on that one. I don't believe so, Your Honor. I believe it right. is a PR. So she is only being held in custody on this case. <laughs> All right. Well, um, actually, Your Honor, there is, it shows bond denied on both. Yeah, that's what I, that was yes. my understanding. So she doesn't, when you say she doesn't have a bond, she's not getting out either way. And I don't understand, and maybe they have not updated things because the jail shows her court date in that matter to be June 15th. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe they have not corrected the date to May 24th. Aww, with you. thank Correct. you. Okay. So she's not, given the fact that she's basically been denied that and bond on that other case that is now my case, so she won't be getting out. And I have this, I could deal with it, but it doesn't seem to me to make much sense to not try to put all of that together under one umbrella and adjourn um, this out to the 24th. Can I say something, Your Honor? Oh, please, you can go for it. Um, so I got out of jail, um, and when I got out of jail last month, I was doing really good. I relapsed one time, and then that was the date I had to go and drop was the very next day. I've been doing really good other than that, and I relapsed because I'm in a new relationship, and um, I figured since I'm, you know, early recovery and stuff that uh, a new relationship isn't great for me, and so I told him that it would be better if we were just friends. Your Honor, and I have, I have something to say to that. Um, when I did the PSI with Ms. Harburg, um, she did report to me that she drank alcohol the day she got out of jail um, to celebrate getting out of jail, knowing that I, she had these other cases. I didn't realize that it was, it was um, uh, the bond was so that I couldn't do anything. I didn't realize that because the bond was set for three years ago. Mm hmm. You didn't realize that they, they didn't they didn't read that to you like they do every freaking day. OK, you know, and I didn't read the paperwork, apparently. <laughs> Your Honor, I also have some other concerns. <laughs> Miss Miss Harburg um, is recent. <laughs> that is so astounding. So astoundingly stupid. I I can't even formulate a thought. <laughs> receiving um, medicated uh, assisted treatment. Um, she is receiving uh, methadone. Seriously. And with her using the drugs yeah. that she's using along with that, that is, that's a recipe for disaster for her. And I have I, three concerns. I stopped using heroin completely. The fentanyl was in the cocaine that I used. It was not in any, I haven't used any heroin at all. <laughs> Only using the methadone for my opiate addiction. Okay. But you do understand with the fentanyl that that's still going to cause a problem? I understand. And I've completely stopped using cocaine and everything else. Like, I just, I only did it one time because I was relapsing. Okay. I, we're going to go through all this. But, I mean, her positive drug tests are like a week or two ago. <laughs> Oh, I, wow. And I was really in a bad place. But I've been doing really good, and so I'm really upset that I'm here because I fucked up one time. I don't think that is a legal term, but... Sorry, you know, young, I'm sorry. Young lady, young lady, look. Of course it is. You get out, right? You drink. Then we get to you. Do you have a marijuana card? Yeah, I'm in the process of getting it right now. I have but to go. You back. don't have. Okay. I have Listen to get my, my state ID. You don't have a car, right? No. And so when we went and had you tested, and this was only nine days ago that we had you tested, you come back with three drugs in your system. That's yeah. a problem. Yeah, I know. It looks really bad. 
My words don't mean anything right now, and that really sucks. Well, because it doesn't just look bad, it is. And then on top of that, when Miss Polera asked you, I was trying when, to be honest. What did you what did you say? I was trying to be honest. You were trying to be honest? Yeah, because she was asking. And what me, and that just didn't work for you or what happened? I mean, it doesn't When Miss Polera asked you if you were using, what did you say? I told her no. And that wasn't true, was it? No. And so when you tell me that you've been clean, I was afraid to go tell back. Tell me, to jail. Tell, hold, hold on. You know what, young lady? I'm sorry, I'm listening. I've been dealing with addicts a long time. And the one thing that they do is they'll, at times, won't tell me the truth. And then the other thing is, you try to over talk me. I'm sorry. So I'm going to let you say whatever you want to say, but you're going to ultimately end up answering my questions. Which is. That was not the only time that you used. It was. I'm being totally honest when I say I have no reason to lie about this. I really don't. I used. Oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I don't lie. I mean, I tr I try not to lie sure. as much as oh, possible. Okay. All right. I was afraid All of right. going back you to know, jail. Go ahead. I'm going to listen to you. I'm, I was afraid of going back to jail when I did the... And how that work? Not great, because here I am. Yep. So here's what I'm going to do, because I think at some point you're going to need to have an in-depth conversation with your attorney. And I, given what I'm hearing, given what I'm seeing, I'm not sure that I would have followed this recommendation anyway of just four days. Um, because I, I really don't believe that you stopped. I don't believe you get all that into your system, then lie to the probation department, get you tested, and then... I was supposed to test yesterday. If I would have been able to go in and test, you would have seen that I'm, that I, I'm not using anymore. <laughs> because you've been in jail. <laughs> no, I just got put in jail yesterday. I was supposed to drug test yesterday at Community Corrections, and if I would have been able to go in and test, you would be able to see that only I, I don't have any of that shit in my system anymore. So you tested on 427. Well, we have a 5-1 test. Yeah, I think you need to have a more thorough conversation with probation or with your attorneys regarding this and the other matter, as well as what you're doing. Because quite frankly, you're out there doing this and you're going to end up killing yourself. And um, unless you start just about I, stuff you're, and whatever. I, I just nope. wanted to say one more thing is that I know how badly my heroin use was killing me and I really well last time I got out of jail last month I was really really like on track to get better and that's why I started going to the methadone clinic every day and I've been going every day there's paperwork um showing that I went every day and I'd do all the tests that they asked. Um, like I said, I only, I relapsed one time. My boyfriend got upset about something and he was really mopey and I couldn't handle it because I had just gotten out of jail. I was still newly recovering and I, I couldn't deal with it. So yeah, I did. I did go out and use, but I haven't used since then. I have no desire to use. I really don't. I really do want to get better. So you're saying that on 427, when you tested positive, April 27, mm -hmm. that that's the same drugs that were in your system that then appeared on 5 1? Um, I'm not sure. No, no, I used the night before I dropped. That's the night that I was, that I, I relapsed. 
on five. So you used on April 30th because you tested yeah. on five one, right? Yeah. Yes. Then, then why on April 27th were you testing positive? April 27th. I didn't. Yeah. You didn't say the cat jumped on his wiener, did you? Uh, I didn't go in for another drug test. I only went in for one. That's not what my report says. It says in the report that I have from Community Corrections, she reported to me that she's been clean. Hmm, same thing that she said to probation. Since she was released from the Washington County Jail. However, when tested on April 27, 2023, she tested with a positive result for THC fentanyl. Yeah, this is, this is the one I break my rule for. Uh -huh. And cocaine. <laughs> I think that was the Then same. the other part, hold on. Okay. Then the other part of the report indicates that they received our new report and that then you tested on 5-1-2023 five, and tested positive for that. Well, those were the same drugs because I never used but one time. Your Honor, I, I believe that they... Um, do they have their dates confused? Or? I, think they, I, I know that she tested on April 27th, and um, I don't show another test. Her next test should have been yesterday, which they had. Yeah, um, without getting into further detail, there were drugs involved. That That's because she was here in court. Yeah. And so you have, so where they've indicated 5-1, it is only that 427 test? It is. That's correct, Your Honor. Okay, then we need to get that corrected by community corrections. I want a clarification of that. I will I will send uh, them a message. All right. Just so that we're clear on all of that. All right. Well, I think, Council, then here's what I'm going to do, just because I'm not sure I believe what the defendant is telling me. I'm going to adjourn this to May 24, 2023, 9 a.m. or as resumed by it indicates. I would indicate that if you wish her bond to be reduced in this and the other matter, you can file a motion before the court to do so. But at this time, I'm not reducing her bond. Her bond will continue as denied. Thank you. The wheels of justice are going to roll you right into the Wayne County Jail. Reinstated, he didn't want to go forward with the bench trial, and then he provided a doctor's note for why he missed in March. So, Mr. Battle, what is your intention today? Do you want to have this bench trial? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. Well, again, the charge is speeding 92 and a 65. Mr. Regeer, are you ready? I am, Your Honor. Mr. Battle, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, now I'm going to need you to find a spot, sit down, and quit moving around, if you would, please. We're in court. Back in my day, there was a hell of a basketball player named Kenny Battle, and that, that's what I'm thinking about, but this guy doesn't look like him. Thank you. Any opening statements? Your Honor, at this time, the state would waive opening argument. Mr. Battle, any opening statement? No, Your Honor. Mr. Regeer, please call your first witness. Your Honor, at this time, the state calls Deputy Nicholas Triantafelis to the stand. Please raise your right hand, sir. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. I, fi I figured it out. Jay Regeer reminds me, and this is a hell of a strange reference, he reminds me of the Hall of Presidents at Disney World, which I, which I haven't been to in 30 years. But, but that's what he reminds me of, his movements. Thank you. Mr. Regeer, you may proceed. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, <laughs> please state your name for the purposes of the record. Nicholas Trantafellis. Uh, where are you employed? Currently with the Pinal County Sheriff's Office in Arizona. Okay. And uh, what is your professional title in that position? Deputy Sheriff. Um, where were you employed as of last year, August 6th of 2022? Butler County Sheriff's Office. Okay. And um, were you employed as a deputy at that time? Yes. Damn straight. Um, oh, and overall, how long have you worked as an officer? Approximately eight years. Uh, were you on active duty in your professional capacity with the Butler County Sheriff's Office on August 6, 2022 at approximately 12.15 a.m.? Yes. At that time, where were you at? At that time, I was patrolling U.S. Highway 54 in uh, rural Andover, Butler County. So you described this as a rural area. Would, would you describe this as a wide open rural area? Uh, to an extent, yes, there are businesses along. I don't know why this is making me laugh already. It's just the personalities involved. Regeer gets me. He is like so straight laced. He's doing things right. He's doing things by the book, which is perfect for this guy who wants to fight a traffic ticket. Oh, you, you want to fight a traffic ticket? G guess what? You ran into a prosecutor who really wants to fight a traffic ticket too. Let's do this. North and south sides of the highway, uh, which was my primary area of focus. Um, at that time, at the time, uh, were you in a vehicle or on foot? A vehicle. Uh, were you moving? Yes. And what direction were you facing? I was traveling eastbound. Now, you've already mentioned that you were not within city limits and that there were some uh, commercial buildings in that area. Um, <laughs> Uh, give a quarter brief overview. What type of businesses operate out of those buildings, if you know? Um, there are several uh, built, or businesses in the area, um, storage centers, vehicle repair centers, um, uh, different buildings like that. Any uh, rivers, waterways, or bridges nearby? <laughs> Not that I uh, can recall. Um. And did this um, incident occur on a paved road? Yes. And uh, which paved road was this? I mean, this is like straight from like the the flow sheet. <laughs> like he, he like he prepped for this thing. God bless him. He's 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 ready. U.S. fifty four highway. Now, at the area that you're describing, are there any street lights near this area? I don't believe there's street lights. There's lights off the highway from some of the businesses. And um, and these lights, they outside the businesses, um, where are they located compared to the to US 54? Um, they'd be several hundred feet off the highway to the north and south. Um, and are these um, isolated street lights or are they more an extended line of, of lights? Uh, they're isolated. Are you familiar with KSA 8, 1558? Yes. And what does that say about drivers and maximum speed limits? Um, that uh, is not to exceed the posted speed limit on any highway. And uh, US 54, is that a highway in Kansas? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, I respectfully request the court take judicial notice of KSA 8, 1558. Thank you. Uh, in your experience, do you consider yourself capable of identifying traffic violations when you see them? Yes. Okay. Uh, beyond your eight years of experience, do you have any other special training or past experiences which allows you to do this? Uh, yes. Um, one of the um, certifications I hold is actually a radar instructor, um, which is one of the tools I was using that night. <laughs> that, and, that would be fun. It would and be. as far as your, um, your certification as a radar instructor, do you go through recertification? Um, 
not necessarily recertification. Uh, the radar units themselves get recertified, um, but I'm at the point where I'm teaching other officers how to use radar. Mm -hmm. Look. So on the date and time in question, did you see any acts that you consider traffic violations? Yes. Uh, could you please describe what you saw? Uh, yes. I, as I was traveling eastbound on US 54 Highway, I observed a white Chevy Camaro traveling westbound on US 54 Highway that had a loud slash modified exhaust, which drew my attention because the vehicle was accelerating at a rapid speed. Um, I then believed that the vehicle exceeded the posted speed limit on the highway and activated my rear antenna radar. Um, and I was able to lock the vehicle in on radar at 92 miles an hour in a posted 65. Okay. Now, uh, we got us a Chevy Camaro with modified exhaust. <laughs> What could go wrong? <laughs> the, looking over the ticket, killed. it looks like the stop occurred um, at 12.15 a.m. Um, how were you able to see the, the Chevy if, if it was that time of day or night? Right? Uh, it was the only other vehicle on the road traveling westbound, and it had its uh, one headlight. One headlight was out, uh, and tail lights were illuminated. We can drive it home. With one headlight. Now I want to talk about the um, the tools that you used. Um, you mentioned that you activated your radar. Is that stalker radar? Yes, I was using a stalker DSR two X radar. Um, do you use? Um, and you already mentioned that you uh, you're teaching other officers how to use that at this point. Do you use testing on stalker radar to check that it's working? Yes, prior to any shift, I do do testing, a tuning fork test, and a self-test of the uh, radar itself. Okay. And um, if you were to conduct this testing prior to any of your shifts and it was not working properly, what would happen then? The radar would be uh, taken out of service, and it would need to be recertified by a licensed um, radar repair shop or stalker radar themselves. Um, does stalker radar require daylight to work properly? No. Um, and, and how do you know this? Um, light has nothing to do with radar. Um, it's sending out a signal, uh, a wavelength that, uh, is being sent out at the speed of light and returning at the speed of light when it hits an object. Um, light has nothing to do with it. Okay. Um, now, on the date and time in question, was the stalker radar... Well, I mean, if it's going at the speed of light, then it's light. <laughs> so light has something to do with it, but but we get your point. Are you working properly? Yes. Did you conduct the um, the pre-patrol testing at the um, prior to your shift that day? Oh, hell yes. Yes, I conducted uh, pre-shift testing with my tuning fork certified at 25 and 40 miles per hour. Oh, Yes. This is this is a traffic citation. I'd be like, yeah, did you clock this guy? Yeah, how fast was he going? You know, that's that. And then if he cross-examined him on his credentials, then then I'd cram it down his throat. But I wouldn't even bother going in. I'm not saying it's right. It's just. Um, can you in fact confirm that the Chevy was clocked by the stalker roll. radar? Yes. And why is that? It was the only other vehicle on the road traveling westbound. <laughs> um, and what was the posted speed where you were at? 65 miles per hour. 65, all right. And um, you may have mentioned this earlier already, but what speed did the stalker radar measure the Chevy traveling at? 92 miles per hour. So a difference of 27 miles per hour overall. <laughs> yes. Uh, what happened after you clocked the Chevy speed? So, officer, his speed exceeded the posted speed limit by precisely 27 miles per hour. Is that correct? <laughs> uh, I immediately went to the next available turnaround on the highway, turned around, <laughs> and accelerated to try to catch up to the white Chevy Camaro. And were you able to catch up with the white Chevy Camaro? Eventually, after chasing it through a neighborhood in the city of Andover. Okay. 
Uh, were you able to, when you did catch up with that, with the uh, Chevy Camaro, were you able to recognize it? Yes. Um, I was able to um, follow the, the vehicle through the neighborhood uh, and conducted a traffic stop on Andover Road, just north of US 54 Highway. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you conducted the stop, were you able to um, successfully identify the driver? Yes. And um, what did you use to identify them? Um, I don't remember how I identified right. the driver, um, but he was identified as Kenneth Battle. Did you um, ask for any identification? Yes, I would have. Okay. And um, do you recall what um, identification you received, if any? Uh, I don't recall if he provided a driver's license or just his name and date of birth. Okay. Uh, do you see the driver of the Chevy present in the Zoom conference? Yes. Do you uh, please point the driver out and give a brief description for the court? Uh, yes, he is in the bottom left of my screen wearing a black colored shirt. Your Honor, let the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant. The record shall so reflect. Uh, Deputy, were you able to uh, speak to the defendant eventually? Yes. And uh, did you discuss the defendant's speeding? I did, yes. And how did he respond to that? Um, he informed me that he was out test driving the vehicle. He had been doing some work on it, um, but he was uh, very rude, um, did not want to speak to me, um, did not want to sign for a citation. Um, so. But were you ever able to um, uh, provide the defendant with the citation? Yes, I did. And um, did and how would you describe his attitude after you were able to give hand him the citation? Uh, he was still rude, was not happy, and he filed a complaint on me. RNA redirect. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Battle, have you any cross examination questions of the witness? Um, yeah, at the time uh, he uh, clocked me, I asked him. Uh, don't how fast do you need to go to sure. say that again? Don't talk to me. This is your time to ask questions of the witness. Do you have any questions of the witness? <laughs> um, well, he says he clocked me at 92. And my question for him would be, uh, how is that possible, just turning out of my driveway on the 54? See, I have a radar detector, and I knew he was there, so it would make no sense to do 92. I just turned off of a Jackson, dirt road. Your Honor, so it's on, on. On redirect. Hey, wait a minute, Mr. Battle. I'm sorry, what was the objection? Testifying on redirect. Right. Again, Mr. Battle, if you have a question for him, so my yes. question is, how, how is it physically possible to do 92 miles an hour from a standstill? I'm not sure if an airplane... Okay, stop, stop. Please. Let him ask. an argument. Me, you've asked a question, now let him give you an answer. <coughs> um, yes, you did pull out of your driveway, and as soon as you did, you accelerated at a rapid speed. And as you continued traveling, the highest speed that I clocked you at was 92 miles per hour. Don't you hate it when they give a good answer? And you failed to show me your radar for what reason? I don't have to. It's an officer safety um, thing. See, and Nicholas, you... I've, had a, I've had a lot of tickets in my life. I've never fought one of them. But I'm fighting this one. There's a reason for that. It's because I wasn't doing 92 miles oh, an hour. Oh, no, do you have a question? So I want to know how. Bringing up your vast experience with getting tickets is, is not a good idea at a bench trial for your speeding ticket. Oh. You say uh, I was doing 92 miles an hour from the standstill. Okay. Yeah. I think he's answered that question. We had no more than 100 feet between me and your patrol car going Isn't eastbound. Is that a question? So how is that, that physically question? possible? How, yeah. How is that physically possible? And you said there was no other vehicles, but your car was surrounded with vehicles. Okay, you're testifying. But I saw your charge between all of them. Sir. As my radar points directly to you. Mr. Battle, you yes, will get yes, a chance. 
Would you like to be the judge? Would you like me to step aside? Now listen, Mr. Battle, you will get a chance to speak and say what you want to say. If you have questions for the officer, this is the No time more questions, to... Your Honor. No more questions? All right. Any redirect, Mr. Regeer? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, he was caught uh, off guard. Deputy, is there any is there any legal requirement that you provide he, he um, out. <laughs> a, a person a view of your soccer radar during a stop? No. No further questions, Your Honor. Okay. Any further evidence, Mr. Regeer, from the state? Nothing further from the state, Your Honor. All right. The state rests. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. All right, Mr. Battle, they've presented what they want to present. Now it's your chance to present what you want, if anything. Do you want to testify? You don't have to, and your silence will not be used as evidence of guilt against you. But you're certainly welcome to testify if you want. Would you like? Your Honor, I don't know what I have to testify with. I'm at the, the scene of where he uh, says he clocked my vehicle at. Um, okay, sir, if you want to make statements, you're going to have to take an oath. So do you want to make statements to the court? Yes, I would like to, and I do have another question for uh, uh, Nicholas as well. Do you mean uh, Deputy Trantafellas? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you I'm gonna let you do this. It's out of order, but I will let you do it. They, he said, he stated that they have no, their radar. Just ask a question. You're making a statement. Ask him a question. Talk to him. You stated that your radars were calibrated before each shift. Um, do you have a date stamp showing that it was calibrated before your shift that night? The radars are tested prior to each shift. Um, certifications of the instrument is conducted each year, and that is um, paperwork is date stamped, but that is with the Butler County Sheriff's Office. How often are you required to have those calibrated? Your only the only requirement for calibration is a is a time of purchase from Stalker. There is no requirement for recalibration throughout the life of the radar if it operates correctly and passes tuning fork Ooh. testing. No further. Right. Anything further? Mr. Regeer, since I let him ask that question, do you have any follow-up? Uh, I do not believe so, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Back to you, Mr. Battle. The state has rested. You've asked your questions on cross. Now, do you want to testify? Um, yes. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Who's, who's given you legal instruction there, Mr. Battle? Who do you have with you that you keep looking to? Oh, my dog. Your dog? Can you point your camera? Yeah, I got, yeah you two of them. I like to try to interrupt everything I do. All right. Put your camera over there so I can see who's with you. No, I don't know that I got a good look at your dog, but you know, okay. All right, so you don't have that one over there. All right, so it's dogs and not people you're you're looking towards. You don't have anybody yes. in the room directing you. All right. No. All right, so you do want to testify? Yes or no? Do you uh, want to yes. testify? You don't have to. I just want to give you the opportunity. I'm not trying to make you feel compelled. I really don't even know what that means, but. <laughs> Okay, I don't want to force you to say something if you don't want to. But if you want to say something, I want to let you do it. It's so painful. Okay. But if you're going to say something about what happened, I need to make you take that same oath that the officer did about swearing to tell the truth. Okay, let's, let's do that then. Let's do that then. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give? shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, Your Honor. Very well. Please lower your hand. And your name is Kenneth A. Battle, is that correct? That is correct. 
And you are the defendant or the person accused in this no. case today? No, it is not. Yes. <laughs> and you live in Andover, Kansas? I do. None of us are prepared right. for this. Please tell me what you would like to concerning August 6th, 2022 traffic stop. Um, I do drive a Chevy Camaro. Um, I pulled out from the stop sign uh, coming on to Kellogg. That's the only way I have to enter onto Kellogg as my driveway leads to a dirt road, which leads up to Kellogg at the stop sign there at Pahuska. And I turned on to uh, Highway 54 and uh, my radar goes off. So I instantly knew there was an officer nearby. And then I saw him physically with my eyes. Um, and then it's about a two mile stretch or more to Andover Road. And Very I poorly. see the officer that was headed the other direction um, on my on my tail. He was behind me. And um, anyways, after he pulled me over, I'd asked the officer, you know, he said I was doing 92 and so on. And then I asked him, um, I said, well, how fast did you go to catch me? He said he had to go pretty fast. I said, so it's okay for you to speed, but not me. And he said that he had his lights and sirens on, which he did not. You can see for miles from Andover Road, and they never came on. He never had lights on, um, so I'm not sure why he was. Okay, dummy, he's not on trial here, and your defense is uh, implying an admission. Going substantially over the speed limit with no uh, emergency flashers, and um, the only one I could see that was speeding out there would have been him because I saw him with my own eyes. And somehow he caught me at Andover Road in a very short period. So I did call his sergeant, and he said he would do an investigation. <laughs> and the oh, officer. I see this part. Oh, he calls the sergeant to report reports <laughs> reports the officer for speeding. <laughs> Brilliant! Brilliant! Was let go, and now he's in Arizona. So you're saying. Can I read up? I read up on these officers uh, speeding without emergency flashers causing accident, and it's the big issue. So I've, I've tried to just keep this one off the the radar and uh, try to yeah. handle it. <laughs> He's trying to take take it easy on the officer. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Elsewhere. Oh. Your Honor, I feel I must step in and object <laughs> on grounds of on grounds of. Oh, come on, Jared, just 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 jump right on there and object. You know, you are the prosecutor in this thing. It's totally okay. Relevance <laughs> um, is Mr. Bat is the defendant who's on trial here. Um, additionally, um, I've reviewed the the relevant statutes, and I and I'm not finding any of this as. Usually, when people say I've reviewed the, the relevant statutes, they're lying. Jared is not lying. He has reviewed the relevant statutes in preparation for his traffic case. <laughs> um, statutory elements of the alleged offense. I'll take note of what you said, counsel. You're correct, but I don't know that. I'll just take the testimony for, for what it is, but I understand your objection basically overrule it, although it, just to allow him what he had to say. Yeah, Judge, it all goes to wait. Mm -hmm, sure. So what else, Mr. Battle, if anything, do you have? <laughs> In other words, I, I don't want to hurt my brain about it. Like, I can't remember what he said anyway. It was irrelevant. <laughs> You know, I that, that Camaro I have is fast, but it's it's impossible for it to go that fast. Um, it, it, it's just not possible. I've Judge, it's impossible for me to exceed the speed limit in my bitching Camaro with modified exhaust. It, it, it can't even be done. <laughs> okay, go with that. And at the drag strip with it, and it, it's not that fast. <laughs> Anything else? That's all I got. <laughs> he squeezes in a drag strip flex. <laughs> oh man, it just gets worse and worse. <laughs> oh.
Oh. All right, Mr. Gear, any questions? Cross examination? Oh. Nothing from the state, Your Honor. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Battle? No, Your Honor. Okay. Both parties resting. I do find the defendant guilty of speeding 92 and a 65, even though he what? says his Camaro won't do that. I'm shocked. I'm completely shocked. She thinks he was speeding. Well, so do I. He won't go 92. <laughs> but I'm finding that it did on August 6, 22, 2015. And I also question the defendant's testimony that this officer didn't have any lights or sirens on because otherwise... Why would Mr. Battle have pulled over? He would have I had like no the silly reason set up going on. if the officer didn't have his lights or sirens on indicating the defendant should pull yeah, over. You say that. It's because he turned them on on Andover Road when I was doing 20 miles an hour. Okay. You, you had your chance to testify, and now it's my chance to talk. You don't find anybody not guilty here. <laughs> Everybody's guilty in this. I didn't even want to come to trial for that reasoning. <laughs> right. You didn't want to come to trial because she's going to find you guilty, and you were, in fact, guilty. So I, I, I agree with you. You did not want to come to trial, but y you're compelled by law. So you watch court every day? <laughs> Pretty much. Yours. I've never seen you find anybody innocent, that's for sure. They never do, even with an attorney. So, right. Once I've seen him appear in court, I, I was just going to clock out and just pay the ticket. All right. Well, Mr. Battle. You know, I've been suspended for two months for no reason. I could have just paid the ticket. Mr. Battle, I noticed you <laughs> smiled when the officer said he eventually was able to catch up to you in a neighborhood. You found that something to smile about. You said that you've had a lot of tickets in your lifetime. Sure have. And that you keep a radar detector and were able to detect the officer. Correct. And uh, all of that is concerning to the court. But what I find you guilty of is based on the testimony presented today by an officer with much experience in enforcing the law and He's traffic. Not and in... Uh, Using the radar, he teaches radar, he testified, uh, radar application, and he testified that his radar was working accurately on the day of the stop. So your fine today is $168. Your court costs are $108. And your total due is $276. You can pay that today if you can get to El Dorado by 5 p.m. Can you do that? Nah, not, not today. I'll uh, just do it. He's busy. Whenever you need me to do it. I don't, when do you want me to do it? I can't make it today. All right. I heard someone say, Your Honor, was that you, Michelle? Yes, Your Honor. Um, yes. Mr. Battle also has an additional 122 for a reinstatement fee. All right, so you'll have to pay 122 reinstatement. And you mentioned that you didn't pay this in a timely fashion, that you were suspended for two months because you ignored no. this ticket. No, no, I didn't ignore it. I missed court date with that doctor's note. Yeah. And then someone was in a hurry to suspend me. No, well, that's, that's not the reason that you... Oh, it just gets worse and worse. I didn't ignore it. I had a failure to appear. Oh, oh, well, that's better. Oh, Kenneth, Kenneth, uh, being stupid is expensive. You were suspended. That's what I was told. Let me when I called a... down there two days after my court well, date, they, they issued a suspension. Well, you got the ticket August 6th of 2022. The citation was issued August 6th, the 2022. You were told on the ticket to report to the court by September 21st of 2022. 
And on September 22nd, 2022, I believe he was suspended, was he not, Michelle? No. Um, no. So Are you the date at the bottom of the ticket is a due date. If he chooses to schedule a court date, then we'll schedule him a court date. Once he failed to appear at that hearing date, the state suspended him for failure to appear. Okay, once he failed to appear at the 922 date? Mm -hmm. At the 838 date, March 8th. Oh, okay. All he right. was suspended. Tell you it, boys. And he's not allowed to pay it until the case is concluded. It would be a good name well, for Well, I'm looking at October 13th, the delinquent notice was sent, which would be two months, August to September to October. He apparently didn't call in to get a court date either, did he? Looks like he's got two things going on. I think once he got that 30-day letter saying that he needed to either do something with his case, either pay it or schedule a court date, then he would be suspended. He scheduled a court date. And then he failed to come to court. And that prompted his suspension. Okay. And, he, and then instead of getting a doctor's note, he waited. Have you ever had a failure to appear? Possibly. For over a month. And I don't know if we ever saw a doctor's note, did we? I showed you on court. I'm going to send a picture. In any event, you you did not take care of this in a timely manner and Topeka, not this court, but the Department of Revenue issued you a suspension fee. So tell me, okay, why does it say, Michelle, that he owes three ninety eight? Because that's his fine and court costs, but not that's not showing a suspension fee. No, it is, isn't it? It is. Okay. All right, so you owe fines, costs, and a $122 suspension fee for a total of $398. And when can you pay that, sir? No, whenever it's fine. I don't. I just can't come today. Okay. You want to come tomorrow and pay it? Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. All right. I'll give you until 5 o'clock tomorrow to pay that. No, and that can't be paid remotely, is that accurate? Well, it could be, but not today and not tomorrow. You have to pay in person. It actually can be paid online. Because of the infraction, the state automatically assesses the fines and the court fees. Okay. So he can pay online today right. or tomorrow. All right, so you want to pay that today then? And how do I get a, um, will it give me a receipt when I do that online? Yes. Okay, so go to pay KS courts, pay KS courts, C O U R T S dot com. You will need your case number of B U for Butler, B U dash 2022, the year of the ticket, dash. TR for traffic dash zero zero two four nine two. After BU, what was that? Twenty twenty two. The dash that BU twenty twenty two. And then TR dash zero zero two four nine two. Correct. Probably. Now, I should tell you that you have up to 14 days to appeal this to the Kansas Court of Appeals. If you do, your appeal bond will be that 398. And so once order, I pay this, I can, uh, my license can be reinstated. Is that accurate? Well, it's not automatically reinstated. You have to go through whatever hoops Topeka Department of Revenue require. That's not in my realm here of uh, possibility. Uh, this, is what, this is what's suspending my license. Is that accurate? 
I do not know that, sir. But if you do not pay this by the end of the day, since you've told me you can and that you will, if you don't do that, then you'll get further suspensions on your license and further troubles. I have a strong sensation there will be future uh, battle appearances on Law Talk with Mike. Well, if you can't do it, you need to tell me, but you've told me you can, and I'm going to hold you to it. Why don't we just put it for 30 days? No, because you told me you could pay it today. <laughs> okay. All right. Nothing further. We'll be in recess. Thank you, Deputy Toronto Fellows. If you said it's Tarantophilus. Is that what you said a while ago? Tarantophilus. Tarantophilus. Yes. Your Honor. All right. I thought I had it figured out, and then I, I'm not sure I do. Yes, Mr. Regeer. Uh, two final points. Um, as far as the defendant paying off the case today, um, at, I'm assuming that would be at 5 o'clock for the time for purposes of the journal entry. Um, also, does the court want the journal entry to reflect the $122 in reinstatement fees? I do. That Thank is part of, his, part of his order. <laughs> and he's told me he's totally able to do that, so I'm holding him to it. All right, if there's nothing further, the deputy is excused, and Mr. Battle is excused. Hey, we're here, everyone. I would Round note that there was no uh, evidence that this defendant got this deputy fired. I'm not making that ruling today. That was a stone-cold takedown. All right, thank you all. Thank you. Well, I have Christian Warren here. He's okay, this just makes me crazy. On my docket is he, although he is set for bench trial. Your Honor, if I may. Yes. How about if I call that case? We're on the record in 2022, TR 4131, State of Kansas versus Christian. Warren. <coughs> Mr. Regeer? This guy is nice. Uh, Your Honor, I'm nice. showing that um, an order of for continuance was filed in this case, um, signed by Your Honor, um, on specifically on the grounds of witness unavailability. Okay, and then was that for the state? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so apparently the matter is being continued. Mr. Warren, did you, for the record, have an objection to the continuance? Mm -hmm. And here's where he screws up. It's minor, but here's where he screws up. And I can't hear you, Mr. Warren. Do you have your video set up? <laughs> it's just a zoo. Can you hear me now? I can, yes, sir. You were saying? Uh, um, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, who the witness, as in the witness of the officer? Apparently, apparently he's had some issue that he could. Okay, this is a minor point, but hell yes, you object. I'm here. It's set for trial. They don't have their witness. I object. I want to proceed today. As soon as you know they don't have a witness, you want to go to trial. You want to go to trial badly because that trial means you win. Now, the judge is probably going to deny that, grant them the request, but now you have in the record the next time, if the witness doesn't show up, and you and it was continued over your objection on state's motion, the judge isn't going to do it again. So, so you either get it that day if you're lucky, or set it up for day two. Can be here. That's fine. Okay. When, right. when would you like to do it? I mean, that that's not dumb. That he's being uh, he's being reasonable and social. It's not a stupid thing, but it's just as an attorney, it, it's you're like, no, 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 don't do that. Object, object, object. Not, not in like, like a crazy man. Just, just say, no, I'm here. I'm ready for trial. Um, Miss, uh, where's my clerk? Did my clerk leave me? Uh, she's coming back, Judge. Mr. Regeer, what would you have available? Maybe in about thirty days. Could you, could you have your witnesses in thirty days? Do you need a little more time, a little less time? Bloop, 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 One moment, bloop, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I think he's malfunctioning right now. <laughs> His circuits are overloaded from that big victory. Uh, Your Honor, the um, order of continuance does um, continue the matter to um, uh, the 12th day of July at 1.30 p.m. Um, however, some new information has recently been brought to my attention in this case. Um, if the defense, I would, might respectfully inquire if the court has an issue with continuing it one week after that to the July 19th, 1.30 bench trial docket. Mr. Warren, can you be here July 19th at 1.30 for bench trial? Um, let me look really quick. Sure. July 19th at what time again? 1.30. Of course, he's going to say dinner with myself. I can't cancel that again. I can make that work. Yeah. I'm sorry, but that day is closed. We have an in-person hearing in El Dorado that day. For me? Yes. Oh. Uh, you have two in-person trials that day uh, by two different attorneys, and one of them's a motion to suppress. Okay. How about giving us another date then? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. How you about July twenty-six? <laughs> Mr. Regeer. Mr. Warren, does that work? I believe the um, I believe that works from the state's perspective, Your Honor. Can you do one thirty on that date, Mr. Warren? Yes, yes. Oh, he Rigger's uncomfortable right now because he hasn't confirmed with his witness that they're available that date. He hasn't confirmed. You can't. It, it was a surprise, and it, it bothers him. It bothers him. He said, "I think the state can do it. I'm not sure, but I think so." Good Lord, just dismiss the ticket. It's a speeder. Come on. Yes, Your Honor. All right. So, Mr. Regeer, if you can update that continuance to document to the 26th, please. Let's continue it again to the 26th. It will be done, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, Mr. Warren is excused. Is there anything else we have from anyone else on this docket? Your Honor, I have a question. Sure. Oh, good Lord. Um, I got a letter in the mail. I don't know if you want to hold this up or not. It, it just says I have an outstanding balance for the case. Mm -hmm. And it said to okay, this case get 20 better. days of the tell you. letter being received. Um, I don't, I thought I didn't have to pay that until after the court. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, Michelle, what can you tell us about the notice he got? This is, this is rich. After his last court date, we were putting in notes, but it triggered it because the court date was the day before, and if the notes aren't done in a certain amount of time, it triggers a letter. Disregard that. It's held over to your next hearing date. But I show his bench trial date is July. D disregard our demand for payment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of an operation you're running over there? First of all, I don't know why I don't understand the the issue, but we're pre-trial here. I don't know what he has to pay at all. That doesn't make sense to me. But but oh damn, we just generated a demand for payment, but we really but we shouldn't have. <laughs> oh okay. July twelfth. I didn't even show it was today. I, had, I looked it up and saw something about May 10th. Your Honor, the um, motion in order for continuance filed by my office um, was in reference to today's setting. Oh, the, right here, I figured it out. This is the second time I've seen it now. There's some minor administrative error in in uh, Regeer's office, and he is embarrassed. That's what's going on here. There's like... Yeah, for whatever reason, he's like covering up for it. <laughs> it's like no big deal. I would have just been like, "Oh, we messed up the dates, Judge. Can we let, let, let's pick another date?" But but he he doesn't want to go there. Subpoenas that have gone out for the officers say July twelfth, and I believe that is okay. So that implies that his office subpoenaed the officers for the wrong date. 
And and he is like stressing that. <laughs> I'd just be like, judge, we messed up. Can, can we have another date? I'll re-subpoena. Or, or hell, I'll d- dismiss the case. Nellie Pross, b- bye bye. Y- you got lucky today, defendant. Something that my office is in a position to address, Your Honor. Okay. So, regardless of what has been done or set or s- subpoenaed, everyone is in agreement that this matter should be set one time on the calendar, and that is for July 26th. Ooh, I, whoever whoever um, Jay Rieger's Yesenia is, better watch out because he's he's gonna go back to the office steaming mad <laughs> over this debacle. Is that right? <laughs> Are that we is, my, that is my understanding. <laughs> okay, Mr. Gear, your response was uh, that is my understanding, Your Honor. Um, July twenty sixth at one thirty p.m. works for the state. And Mr. Warren, you said that worked for you. So, yes, Michelle, you were saying? The bench trial and all the subpoenas are set for July 12th. So, are we moving all of that? It sounds like we are moving all of that. Mr. Regeer, you're going to reissue your subpoenas and cancel the ones for the 12th? My office will take care of it, Your Honor. And you'll do a journal oh. continuing it from whatever. My office will take care of it, and it will not happen again. That's, in, that's implied. He didn't say it, but that was implied. Because someone's getting a whooping. <laughs> date it's set to, or all dates it's set to, to July 26th. Yes, Otherwise, Ron. it's going to pop up on the 12th, and we're going to go through confusion. All right. Thank you. Michelle, thanks for pointing that out. So hopefully we can get that fixed before the 12th. Okay. Anything else? Your Honor. Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Regeer. Mr. Warren, one more thing. Um, if I wanted to bring in um, he still talks. a witness, is it too late to do that for the 26th? Not at all. Just you can either have them come in and sit beside. No, but it's a pointless waste of time. What you should do is, is tell um, the judge you want to proceed to trial on a date that you were set for trial when the state doesn't have their witness. That's a much better strategy. I do. If they don't want to come in voluntarily, you can issue a subpoena like Mr. Regeer is going to do at, through the clerk of the district court. And they can appear from Zoom wherever they might want to appear. Okay. Is there any paperwork or anything I need to fill out with that? There, If you want to make sure they're here and not just take their word for it, or if they don't want to come, it's called a subpoena. And Michelle, do you have forms for those, or can you get those online? <laughs> Unfortunately, the defendant will have to locate them himself. We don't have any paperwork. All right. No, no, we're we don't have that paperwork. We're we're busy generating uh <laughs> we're we're busy generating erroneous payment demands over here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't I I knew there was nothing afterwards. It made me crazy. And I, I do this to you guys a lot. I really do. Once it made me crazy, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you guys crazy with it. <laughs> that defendant was really nice. He he made a strategic blunder, but he's just, uh, in my estimation, he's he's a nice, reasonable kid who's who's just trying to do the right thing, asking good questions. But he he did miss an opportunity to get his case pitched right there. He he really did. But there we go. One more round of applause for Jay Rager. Showing Mr. Battle the way it's done. He actually really did. It's an impressive job. It was it was um you know, that trial was was uh you know, taking out a mosquito with a machine gun. Yeah, you know, it was a little bit much. But it was very methodical and by the book and and covered all the bases. So there you go. And, and uh, that, that guy had it coming to him. But that is, it, the, I, that's how I started laughing just mid hearing. Like, here's some guys like, I'm, I'm going to, you know, fight the power and I'm going to do this. Like, most prosecutors are like, you know, all grizzled and cranky and like tired of this crap. And you could probably, you could probably talk them into pitching that ticket real easy. 
because they don't want to deal with it and they have 300 other files that day. But no, no, you drew, you drew Mr. Regeer. <laughs> this thing's going to trial and it's going to trial the long, hard way. <laughs> You you want to talk about the uh, calibration of the of the lidar machine? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm ready. I'm ready. I reviewed the relevant statutes prior to hearing. <laughs> oh, it's the wrong prosecutor, and that's that's to his credit. That is to his credit. He got himself a conviction, and then we also had good times over in uh, Judge Simpson's room there. I just like that. I mean, that was just unbelievable. She's like, I, I, she keeps saying I'm doing really good. We'll, 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 we'll move past the uh, slightly improper English there. Uh, and on to the larger issues of her, her version of doing good was no heroin. She was on what, what's the, what's the heroin replacement? She's on that. She's got cocaine. She's got fentanyl. She's got marijuana. But she didn't have heroin. <laughs> and that's and that's when she had the uh, the maintenance. Yeah, the methadone maintenance drugs, which is just methadone is just a heroin replacement. So she's got the, the, the state sponsored uh, free heroin. <laughs> plus, plus three other illegal substances that. By her definition, that was doing good. With with Judge Simpson just going <laughs> the whole time. Oh, good stuff. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for sending me all the good clips. Thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. I'll see you all soon.